Are there any senators in the chamber wishing to vote or wishing to change their vote? Hearing none, the yeas are 81, the nays are 18. The amendment is passed. Madam President, uh, I ask for... The Senate will be in order. Madam President. We will continue when the Senate is in order. Senator from Connecticut. I thank the Chair. Madam President, I ask for uh, reconsideration. Without objection. Lay it on the table. Without objection. Under the previous order, there will be two minutes of debate equally divided prior to a vote, vote in relation to amendment number 1491 offered by the Senator from Alabama, Mr. Shelby. Madam President. The Senator from Maine. Madam President, could we have order, please? Thank you. Madam President, first I want to commend Senator Paul and Senator Shelby for raising the issue of extending these requirements to the executive branch. I agree with them. And I supported the amendment offered by Senator Lieberman, but I also encourage my colleagues to support the amendment offered by Senator Shelby. It would take in uh, the independent regulatory agencies, and it goes a little bit deeper into the executive branch. So I think both principles are correct, that the kind of disclosures that we're going to be required to make should also apply to high-level executive branch employees. And I thank both the senator from Kentucky and the senator from Alabama for their leadership. Madam President. Senator from Alabama. Madam President, I, I appreciate the uh, senator from Maine's remarks. She's saying uh, urging people to vote aye on the Shelby Amendment. I appreciate that. It's a good amendment, and I'd do the same thing. Vote aye. Thank you. The senator from Connecticut. Uh, Madam President, uh, I, I respectfully uh, ask for a no vote. As I indicated in support of the side-by-side -side I offered, uh, executive branch employees now are under uh, very tough ethics uh, regulations requiring, in many cases, divestiture, recusal, uh, and uh, this, adds, uh, th this adds a good requirement, which is for some of them to file electronically the disclosure statements they have to make. But the amendment we just passed, mine, would add uh, that requirement to 2,000 of the top-level policymakers in our federal government. Senator Shelby's would extend that to more than 300,000 federal employees, including some, by our account in the Office of Government Ethics, uh, drivers, uh, secretaries, uh, and in addition to the burden that would place on them unduly, uh, we're asking agencies to, to stretch personnel and resources uh, to fulfill a totally new requirement uh, when, in fact, uh, we want them to save money and not figure out ways to spend more money. So I, I respectfully ask my colleagues to vote no. The question is on the Shelby Amendment as modified. Is there a sufficient second? There appears to be. There is. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Kaka. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Ms. Ayotte. Mr. Barrasso. Mr. Baucus, Mr. Beckage, Mr. Bennett, Mr. Bingaman, Mr. Blumenthal, Mr. Blunt, Mr. Bozeman, Mrs. Boxer,
Mr. Brown in Massachusetts. Mr. Brown of Ohio. Mr. Burr. Ms. Cantwell. Mr. Carden. Mr. Carper. Mr. Casey. Mr. Chambliss. Mr. Coates. Mr. Coburn. Mr. Cochran. Ms. Collins. Mr. Conrad. Mr. Coons. Mr. Corker. Mr. Cornyn. Mr. Crapo. Mr. Dement. Mr. Durbin. Mr. Enzi. Mrs. Feinstein. Mr. Franken, Mrs. Gillibrand, Mr. Graham. Mr. Grassley, Mrs. Hagen, Mr. Harkin, Mr. Hatch, Mr. Heller, Mr. Hoven, Sir. Mrs. Hutchison, Mr. Inoue, Mr. Inhoff, Mr. Isaacson, Mr. Johans, Mr. Johnson of Wisconsin. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota, Mr. Carey, Mr. Kirk, Ms. Klobuchar, Mr. Cole, Mr. Kyle, Ms. Landrew, Mr. Lautenberg, Mr. Leahy, Mr. Lee, Mr. Levin, Mr. Lieberman, Mr. Luger, Mr. McCain, Mrs. McCaskill, Mr. McConnell, Mr. Menendez, Mr. Merkley, Ms. Mikulski, Mr. Moran, Ms. Murkowski, Mrs. Murray, Mr. Nelson, Nebraska,
to Nelson of Florida. Mr. Paul. Mr. Portman. Mr. Pryor. Mr. Reed of Rhode Island. Mr. Reed of Nevada. Mr. Risch. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Rockefeller. Mr. Rubio. Mr. Sanders. Mr. Schumer. Mr. Sessions. Mrs. Shaheen. Mr. Shelby. Ms. Snow. Ms. Stabenow. Mr. Tester. Mr. Thune. Mr. Toomey. Mr. Udall of Colorado. Mr. Udall of New Mexico. Mr. Vitter. Mr. Warner. Mr. Webb. Mr. Whitehouse. Mr. Wicker. Mr. Wyden. Senators voting in the affirmative. Alexander, Ayotte, Barrasso, Blunt, Bozeman, Brown in Massachusetts, Burr, Cantwell, Chambliss, Coates, Coburn, Cochran, Collins, Corker, Cornyn, Crapo, Dement, Enzi, Graham, Grassley, Hatch, Heller, Hutcherson, Inhoff, Isaacson, Johans, Johnson of Wisconsin, Klobuchar, Kyle, Lee, Luger, Manchin, McCaskill, Merkley, Moran, Murkowski, Paul, Portman, Pryor, Risch, Roberts, Rubio, Sessions, Shelby, Snow, Thune, Toomey, Bitter, Wicker, and Wyden. Mr. Webb? Coons. Mr. McCain. Mr. McCain, aye. Mr. Nelson, Nebraska, aye. Mr. Shaheen, aye. Senators voting in the negative. Akaka, Baucus, Beckage, Bingaman, Blumenthal, Boxer, Brown of Ohio, Cardin, Casey, Coons, Durbin, Feinstein, Franken, Gillibrand, Harkin, Anoe, Johnson of South Dakota, Cole, Landrew, Leahy, Levin, Lieberman, Menendez, Mikulski, Murray, Rita of Rhode Island, Rockefeller, Sanders, Schumer, Tester, Udall of Colorado, Warner, Webb, and Whitehouse. Mr. Conrad, no. Mr. Carper, no.
Ms. Stabenow, aye. Mr. Nelson of Florida, aye. Mr. Bennett, no. Mr. Carey. Mr. Udall of New Mexico, no. Mr. McConnell. Mr. McConnell, aye. Mr. Hogan, aye. Mr. Carey. Mrs. Hagan, no. Mr. Reed, of, Mr. Reed of Nevada, no. Mr. Lautenberg, Mr. Lautenberg, no.
Are there any senators in the chamber wishing to vote or wishing the, to change their vote? Hearing none, the yeas are 58, the nays are 41. The amendment is passed. Are you going to move to lay it on? Madam President, I move to reconsider. Without objection? Madam President, what if I move to table? Without objection. Wait a minute, however, though. Under the previous order, there will be two minutes of debate equally divided prior to a vote in relation to amendment number 1485 offered by the senator from Kentucky, Mr. Paul. The senator from Kentucky. No. no. I ask unanimous. I ask unanimous consent. Senate will be in order. I think the issue has already been addressed by the previous amendments. Uh, I thank the chairman and the minority ranking member for their addressing this problem. And I ask unanimous consent that the amendment be uh, withdrawn. Without objection. Ma Madam President. The amendment is withdrawn. Madam President, I, I thank uh, the senator from Kentucky. Uh, I'd urge others with amendments listed here to. Uh, think of uh, following that example, but certainly as I look at the next four amendments, I think they're all non-controversial, and uh, I'd urge their sponsors to have the uh, two minutes of debate, uh, uh, and uh, hopefully let's have a voice vote so we can proceed. Madam President, the Senator from California. Madam President, I believe my amendment is next. There will now be two minutes of debate equally divided on the Boxer Amendment number 1489. Thank you very much, Madam President. Uh, I would be delighted to take a voice vote on this amendment, which I'm proud to say uh, was written by myself and Senator Isaacson. And I'm very pleased that Senator Collins um, suggested the modification. All this really does is broaden the mortgage disclosure requirements on all of us, members of Congress, and it, it does the same thing for the president, vice president, the executive branch employees who are subject to the advice and consent of the Congress. So I think it is fair, I think it is wise, and I think that we've had issues that require this to be done. So with that, I would yield back my time uh, to Senator Collins. Madam President. The Senator from Maine. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, I'm very pleased that the Senator from California has agreed to modify her amendment to apply it to the executive branch. I thank her very much for her cooperation on this, and I would suggest that the amendment be adopted as modified by a voice vote. Uh, the Senator from Connecticut. I ask unanimous consent that we vitiate the 60 vote requirement on this amendment. Without objection. The question is on the amendment. All those in favor say aye. Opposed? No. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. The amendment as modified is agreed to. I move to reconsider. I move to Without objection. Table. Without objection. M Madam President. Senator from Maine. Madam President, the next amendment is one from Senator Portman. It's number 1505. It is truly a technical amendment. I do not believe that it needs a roll call vote. And I would suggest, with the concurrence of the chairman, that we vitiate the yeas and nays and adopt it by a voice vote. Unless you want to speak on it. Senator from Connecticut. I have no objection. The question is on the amendment. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No.
The ayes appears to have it. The, uh, the amendment is approved. So you might call it up. Okay. First they can talk about it. Lay it on the table. It will now be uh, without objection. There will now be two minutes of debate equally divided on the ENSI amendment number 1510. Mr. Pre Madam President. The Senator from Maine. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, this is a very good amendment that Senator Enzi has offered. It recognizes the fact that we do not control trades that happen within mutual funds, and thus there is not a need for reporting every 30 days, rather that we should keep the annual reporting requirement. It has been cleared on both sides. I do not believe that it requires a roll call vote. I would suggest that we vitiate any roll call vote that was suggested and adopted by a voice vote with the concurrence of the chairman of the committee. Uh, Madam President, uh, this is a good amendment uh, and I support it. On behalf of Senator Enzi, I call up the amendment. The clerk will report. The Senator from Maine, Ms. Collins, for Mr. Enzi's proposes amendment number 1510. Question is on the amendment. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. I move to the amendment is agreed to. Move to reconsider. Without objection. And lay it on the table. I move to lay it Without on objection. the table. There will now be two minutes of debate equally divided on the Blumenthal Amendment number 1498. Madam President. The Senator from Massachusetts. President, I would like to uh, take a moment to uh, uh, commend Senator Blumenthal and Senator Kirk. As you all know, Senator Kirk is uh, is battling to uh, come back with us and uh, as a gesture and also because of it's a good government measure uh, this particular amendment uh, number 1498 extends the number and types of felonies for which members of Congress and executive branch employees or an elected state or local government official can lose his or her pension this is a good government amendment an appropriate way to honor our colleague Senator Kirk who we wish a speedy recovery I ask uh, uh, to have the yeas and nays by voice vote. Madam President. The Senator from Connecticut. Thank you, Madam President. I want to join in acknowledging Senator Kirk's contribution to this amendment. The reason that I have offered it is very simply to send a message and have the effect that no corrupt elected official, no official convicted of a felony in connection with his official duties as a member of Congress should receive one dime of taxpayer money and that breach of law should have consequences. And uh, I join in asking for a voice vote. Thank Madam, you, Madam President. Madam President. The Senator from Massachusetts. Thank you. I ask to vitiate the 60 vote threshold in this amendment. Without objection. The question is on the amendment. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. The amendment is approved. Madam President. I assume they want to look. Madam President. Senator from Massachusetts. I to reconsider. Without objection. And I move to lay it on the table. Without objection. There will now be two minutes of debate equally divided on the Toomey Amendment, number 1472. Ma Madam President. The Senator from Pennsylvania. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I rise in behalf uh, of support of my amendment. I want to thank Senator McCaskill for uh, co-sponsoring this amendment and her support on this ban of air marks. What this amendment does is it would codify the current moratorium that's in place. I commend the uh, majority senators for extending that moratorium. But let's just codify this now, put this in place, and end this process that lacks any transparency. Uh, this is a surgical point of order that would not be held against the entire bill, but rather just the specific earmark. Unlike the next amendment, which would allow earmarks on authorization bills and would permit, for instance, earmarking of the bridge to nowhere uh, and would only forbid earmarks on appropes bills, this would be a ban on earmarks of all kinds. Uh, some suggest that we would be ceding our constitutional control of the purse strings. This is clearly not true. 
most of all government spending is not earmarked. Most discretionary spending is not earmarked. That doesn't mean that we have ceded our authority to the uh, executive branch. The fact is we define the terms and the rules under which the spending can occur. That is appropriate, but it ought to happen under scrutiny and should be subject to full review. The senator's time has expired. Uh, the senator from Hawaii. Madam President, this amendment does not save any money. It does not re de uh, reduce the deficit. It just simply gives additional power to the president, thereby weakens the legislative branch. Reality is that without these earmarks, we find ourselves at the mercy of bureaucrats to ensure our local needs are fulfilled. No one in this chamber believes that a bureaucrat here in Washington knows better, understands the needs of their home states as well as they do. So I say again, Madam President, the voluntary moratorium is now 100% successful. It will continue in FY 2013. I urge my colleagues to vote against the Toomey Amendment. Madam President, I ask the yeas and nays. Is there a sufficient second? There appears to be. The senator from Oklahoma. No time remaining. Is there any objection? Ob objection is heard. I withdraw. You withdrew. Re reserving the right to object. Is there objection? Uh, Madam President. Senator from Pennsylvania. Reserving the right to object. If the gentleman will, will grant a minute on his amendment, then I will not object. Mm -hmm. Without objection. Okay. So uh, Madam President, first the of all. Senator from Oklahoma. I appreciate the opportunity to be heard. I agree with what the author, Senator Toomey, is trying to do here in terms of what most people think of as, a, as an earmark. The problem is this. You can vote for this if you're voting for and uh, against all earmarks. As it is defined, it depends on how you do it, but in the House it's defined under their rules, and it has been defined here, as any type of appropriation or authorization. I suggest to you, if you get the Constitution and look up Article 1, Section 9, it says that's what we're supposed to be doing here. And so if you would, if, if I knew that my next amendment would pass, which defines a, a, an earmark as a, an appropriation that has not been authorized, which I know Senator Toomey and several others agree that that would be a good idea, then I'd be in wholehearted support of this. So obviously we should have had that vote first. So I would uh, vote against this even though I agree with what they're trying to do, but my next uh, amendment is going to be the one that would be necessary. Fired. Question is on the amendment. And this amendment has a 60 vote threshold. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Akaka. Mr. Alexander. No. Ms. Ayotte. Mr. Brasso. Mr. Balkus. Mr. Bennett. 
Mr. Bingaman. Mr. Blumenthal. Mr. Blunt. Mr. Bozeman. Mrs. Boxer. Mr. Brown of Massachusetts. Mr. Brown of Ohio. Mr. Burr. Ms. Cantwell. Mr. Cardin. Mr. Carper. Mr. Casey. Mr. Chambliss. Mr. Coates. Mr. Coburn. Mr. Cochran, Ms. Collins, Mr. Conrad, Mr. Coons, Mr. Corker, Mr. Cornyn, Mr. Crapo, Mr. Dement, Mr. Durbin, Mr. Enzi. Mrs. Beinstein. Mr. Franken. Mrs. Gillibrand. Mr. Graham, Mr. Grassley, Mrs. Hagen, Mr. Harkin, Mr. Hatch. Mr. Heller, Mr. Hoven, Mrs. Hutchison, Mr. Inhofe, Mr. Inouye. Mr. Isaacson, Mr. Johans, Mr. Johnson of Wisconsin, Mr. Johnson of South Dakota, Mr. Carey, Mr. Kirk, Ms. Klobuchar, Mr. Cole, Mr. Kyle, Ms. Landrew, Mr. Lautenberg, Mr. Leahy, Mr. Lee, Mr. Levin, Mr. Lieberman, Mr. Luger, Mr. Manchin, Mr. McCain, Mrs. McCaskill, Mr. McConnell, Mr. Menendez, Mr. Merkley, Ms. Mikulski, Mr. Moran, Ms. Murkowski, Mrs. Murray, 
Mr. Nelson of Nebraska. Mr. Nelson of Florida. Mr. Paul, Mr. Portman, Mr. Pryor, Mr. Reed of Rhode Island. Mr. Reed of Nevada. Mr. Rich. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Rockefeller. Mr. Rubio. Mr. Sanders. Mr. Schumer. Mr. Sessions. Mrs. Shaheen. Mr. Shelby, Ms. Snow, Ms. Stabenow, Mr. Tester, Mr. Thune, Mr. Toomey, Mr. Udall of Colorado, Mr. Udall of New Mexico, Mr. Vitter, Mr. Warner, Mr. Webb, Mr. Whitehouse, Mr. Wicker, Mr. Wyden. Senators voting in the affirmative. Ayotte, Barrasso, Bennett, Bozeman, Brown of Massachusetts, Burr, Chambliss, Coates, Coburn, Corker, Crapo, DeMint, Enzi, Graham, Grassley, Hatch, Heller, Isaacson, Johans, Johnson of Wisconsin, Kyle, Lee, McKean, McCaskill, Nelson of Florida, Paul, Portman, Risch, Rubio, Stabenow, Toomey, Udall of Colorado, Vitter, Warner. Senators voting in the negative. Akaka, Alexander, Begich, Bingaman, Blumenthal, Blunt, Boxer, Cardin, Collins, Conrad, Coons, Durbin, Feinstein, Franken, Gillibrand, Harkin, Hoven, Inhoff, Inoue, Johnson of South Dakota, Carey, Klobuchar, Landrew, Lautenberg, Leahy, Levin, Lieberman, Luger, Manchin, Merkley, Mikulski, Murkowski, Murray, Nelson of Nebraska, Pryor, Reed of Rhode Island, Reed of Nevada, Rockefeller, Sanders, Shaheen, Shelby, Tester, Webb, Whitehouse, Wicker, Wyden. Mr. Balkus, Mr. Balkus, no. Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown of Ohio, no. Ms. Snow, no. Ms. Snow, aye. Mr. Cochran, Mr. Cochran, no. Mr. Udall, Mr. Udall of New Mexico, no. Mrs. Hagen, Mrs. Hagen, aye. Mr. Thune, Mr. Thune, aye. Mr. Cornyn, Mr. Cornyn, aye. Ms. Cantwell, Ms. Cantwell, no.
Mr. Moran, Mr. Moran, aye. Mr. Cole, Mr. Cole, no. Mr. Sessions, Mr. Sessions, no. Mr. Roberts, Mr. Roberts, no. Mrs. Hutchison, Mrs. Hutchison, no. Mr. Menendez, Mr. Menendez, no. Mr. McConnell, Mr. McConnell, aye. Mr. Schumer, Mr. Schumer, no. Mr. Casey, Mr. Casey, no. Mr. Carper, Mr. Carper, no. Wishing to vote or wishing to change their vote? Hearing none, on this vote, the yeas are 40, the nays are 59. Under the previous order requiring 60 votes for the adoption of this amendment, the amendment is not agreed to. Madam President, I ask for reconsideration. Without objection. And that it be laid on the table. Without objection. I thank the chair. Under the previous order, there will be two minutes of debate. 
equally divided and one minute control by the Senate senator from Pennsylvania, Senator Toomey, on amendment number 1500 offered by the senator from Oklahoma, Mr. Inhofe. This amendment is also subject to a 60 vote threshold. Madam President. The senator from Oklahoma. Uh, could we get some order, please? Please take your conversations out of the well. The Senate will be in order. Uh, first of all, Madam President, I have the utmost respect for uh, Senator Toomey and what he is uh, trying to do. To me, this bill is compatible. This amendment is compatible with what he is trying to do. It merely defines an earmark as an appropriation that has not been authorized. Now, my junior senator said on the floor a year ago, he said, in a way, that's good because if a bad earmark comes up, we have two shots at it. One on authorization, one on appropriation. And both Senator Toomey, Senator McCain, and others have been very supportive of the idea that we should, we should go back to authorizing. We've been fighting this battle since 1816, and it's time that we end it. This is a way of doing it, merely defining an a, a earmark as an appropriation that hasn't been authorized. I retain the balance of my time. Senator from Pennsylvania. Um, Thank you, Madam President. Um, I, I would just point out that the Constitution doesn't make a distinction between authorizing committee and appropriating committees. And I don't think we ought to be having a discussion and an argument over who gets to earmark and who doesn't get to earmark. It's the process that's flawed. It's the process that doesn't have the kind of scrutiny and the transparency and is not subject to competition the way it ought to be before taxpayer dollars get spent. And so my objection is to this process, wherever it occurs, in, uh, in the Congress, in the Senate, or the House. So while I uh, respect the intentions of my colleague from Oklahoma, I, I would I have to say that I uh, disagree with him on this, and I would uh, suggest a no vote on this amendment. Madam President. The Senator from Oklahoma. I would further say that uh, during the, after the stimulus bill, there are 102 of the most egregious. Uh, would you, the Senator hold, please? Go ahead. Well, all of the, the 102 most egregious votes last year, or, or earmarks, not one was a congressional earmark. They were all bureaucratic earmarks. If we don't do our job, our constitutional job, under Article 1, Section 9 of the Constitution, then the President will expired. be doing our job, and we don't Senator's want to time has expired. The question is on the amendment. Is there a sufficient second? There appears to be. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Kaka. Mr. Alexander. Ms. Ayotte. Mr. Barrasso. Mr. Baucus, Mr. Beckage, Mr. Bennett, Ms. Bingaman, Mr. Blumenthal, Mr. Blunt, Mr. Bozeman, Mrs. Boxer, I'm writing you a script. I'm writing you a script. Mr. Brown of Massachusetts. Mr. Brown of Ohio. Mr. Burr. Ms. Cantwell. Mr. Cardin. Mr. Carper. Mr. Casey. Mr. Chambliss. Mr. Coates. Mr. Coburn. Mr. Cochran. Ms. Collins. Mr. Conrad. <laughs> 
Mr. Coons. It's lost votes. Used to get more. Mr. Corker. Used to get more votes. Yeah. Mr. Cornyn. Mr. Crapo. Mr. Dement. Mr. Durbin. Mr. Enzi. Mrs. Feinstein. Mr. Franken. Mrs. Gillibrand. Mr. Graham. There's a band right now. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Mr. Grassley. Mrs. Hagan. Oh, yeah. Mr. Harkin. Does it continue? Right? Oh. You're marching on the continue. The band comes out. What? Will they come out? Huh? Well, the band is an understanding, though. I don't think it's not as well. We want to continue to be able 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 to Mr. Hatch. Thank you. It's much stronger than what's in the rules right now. What's in the rules right now is basically disclosure. Mr. Heller. Mr. Hoven. Mrs. Hutchison. Mr. Inhofe. Mr. No Way. So this is the description of the next one. Mr. Isaacson. Yes. There will be two minutes. Mr. Johans. Mr. Johnson of Wisconsin. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota. Mr. Carey. Mr. Kirk. Ms. Klobuchar. Mr. Cole. Mr. Kyle, Ms. Landrew, Mr. Lautenberg, Mr. Leahy, Mr. Lee, Mr. Levin, Mr. Lieberman. Mr. Luger, Mr. Manchin, Mr. McCain, Mrs. McCaskill. So you're going to be in the chair for a whole bunch of votes. Four to five. Be done five. Mm, after this one, we've got one, two, three, four, five more amendments. Now maybe some of them will get have a voice vote. If we have votes on all. Mr. McConnell. Yeah. Well, they did do away with some of them earlier that had 60 votes. Mr. Menendez. So that would take over an hour. Mr. Merkley. Ms. Mikulski. Mr. Moran. Ms. Murkowski. Mrs. Murray. Mr. Nelson, Nebraska. Mr. Nelson of Florida. Mr. Paul, Mr. Portman, Mr. Pryor, Mr. Reed of Rhode Island, Mr. Reed of Nevada, Mr. Risch, Mr. Roberts, Mr. Rockefeller, Mr. Rubio, Mr. Sanders, Mr. Schumer, Mr. Sessions, Mrs. Shaheen, Mr. Shelby, yeah, Ms. Snow, Ms. Stabenow, Mr. Tester, 
Mr. Thune. Mr. Toomey. Mr. Udall of Colorado. Mr. Udall of New Mexico. Mr. Vitter. Mr. Warner. Mr. Webb. Mr. Whitehouse. Mr. Wicker. Mr. Wyden. Senators voting in the affirmative. Alexander, Blunt, Boxer, Brown of Massachusetts, Cochran, Collins, Corker, Graham, Hutchison, Inhofe, Isaacson, Kyle, Murkowski, Nelson of Florida, Portman, Roberts, Sessions, Stabenow, and Wicker. Senators voting in the negative. Akaka, Barrasso, Bingaman, Blumenthal, Bozeman, Brown of Ohio, Burr, Cantwell, Cardin, Coates, Coburn, Conrad, Cornyn, Crapo, Dement, Enzi, Franken, Gillibrand, Grassley, Hagen, Harkin, Hatch, Heller, Hoven, Anoe, Joe Hands, Johnson of Wisconsin, Johnson of South Dakota, Kerry, Klobuchar, Landrew, Lautenberg, Leahy, Lee, Lieberman, Manchin, McCain, McCaskill, McConnell, Merkley, Mikulski, Moran, Murray, Nelson of Nebraska, Paul, Pryor, Risch, Rubio, Shaheen, Tester, Toomey, Udall of Colorado, Vitter, Webb, and Wyden. Mr. Warner. No. Mr. Levin. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Luger. No. Ms. Ayotte. No. Mr. Bennett. No. Mr. Chambliss. Aye. Mrs. Feinstein, no. Ms. Snow? Ms. Snow, aye. Mr. Coons, no. Mr. Schumer, no. Mr. Shelby, aye. Mr. Durbin, no. Mr. Menendez, no. Mr. Whitehouse? Mr. Whitehouse, no. Mr. Thune, aye. Mr. Casey? Mr. Casey, aye. Mr. Reed of Rhode Island, no. Mr. Rockefeller, no. Mr. Carper, no. Mr. Baucus. Mr. Baucus, no.
Mr. Udall, New Mexico, no. Mr. Cole, aye. Mr. Reed of Nevada, no. Mr. Beckage, aye. On this vote, the yeas are 26, the nays are 73. Under the previous order requiring 60 votes for the adoption of this amendment, uh, the amendment is not agreed to. Mr. President, 